Hello everyone, let me present you today an interesting way of flashing applications into the ESP32 without direct physical access to the device. And everything will be done over the Discord server. There will be a bunch of useful information in this video, so stay with me after the intro. Welcome back. Here I have basic code that represents template for making Discord bot on the ESP32. And here in the project folder you can see that I have cloned ESP Discord component. If you haven't already, I highly suggest you to check my video about how to make Discord bot on the ESP32 because there I was talking details about how to set up project for using this ESP Discord library. As you can see, this template use example connect function for connecting to local network. And here is function to create bot and login into Discord. Settings project configurations as well as bot token is the same as in video about ESP Discord component. Let me show you now how to integrate OTA feature so that we got ability to flash ESP32 by using Discord. First what we need to do is to include Discord underline OTA.h file. When that is done, after the Discord create function, call the Discord OTA init function and pass the bot handle as a first argument to this function. Second argument of this function is OTA configuration, but we can set it to null to leave default configurations. Second step is to call Discord OTA keep function at the very beginning of the main application function. Because ESP IDF framework has ability to roll back the new version of a firmware, this function will ensure that the new firmware will be preserved. Only argument of this function is boolean, which represent the option whether we want to keep or to roll back to the previous firmware version. In most of cases you will just pass true to this function, but maybe in some special cases you would want to perform some diagnostics against the new firmware and then pass the result to this function. Anyways, these two function calls is every everything what we need to do in code for the integration of OTA feature. The version of application is stored into cmakelists.txt project file. And as you can see, version of my app is currently 1.0. To be able to download new firmware, make sure that you have enabled next option inside of idf.py menu config. Under the partition table, enter this first option with name partition table and choose factory app to OTA definitions. That will make necessary OTA partitions inside of ESP32. Of course, the first flash should be always done manually, so IDFX all COM6. Bot is connected to server. Great. This is how we can now interact with OTA. First, what we can do is to ask about current status with the next message. This is the format of OTA commands. First is prefix. In this case, it is exclamation mark OTA. This is default prefix, but it is configurable. Second part is mention of a device on which we want to perform OTA. And third is a subcommand, in this case status. Ok, let's send this. Bot will respond with very useful informations like version of running application, time of compiling, IDF version, uptime, free heap memory, etc. Bot will send feedback in most of the cases. For example, if we send OT8 command but we mistakenly send wrong subcommand. Here is the descriptive name of the error where it says that subcommand is invalid. To perform actual update, we need to send new binary application as an attachment. Remember that I'm using WSL2 for building ESP IDF application. So for finding build firmware, I can just execute explorer.exe. inside of project folder. That will bring me up Windows Explorer located in my project folder. I can go inside of build folder and there is application firmware. Now I can just drag and drop this into Discord. For the text we need as well write correct format and that is exclamation mark OTA mention of the device and then update. As we can see the update process has been triggered but the error is returned. The message says that the version of the application which we have provided is the same as a running version inside of ESP32. To perform update version of new application should be raised. So go here and increase the version. Build the application in the separated terminal. 
go again to build folder and send the application to the Discord. This time validation passed successfully and the ESP32 has started with downloading our app. Once when the download is complete, ESP32 will perform validation of the downloaded image and if everything is ok, it will be mounted into the boot partition and ESP32 is gonna to reboot. If we now invoke status sub command, we can see that ESP32 is now running a new version of the firmware. Nice. Let's now discuss about a little bit more complex situation. For the sake of easier understanding, let's sketch the current situation. So, what we have so far. Here is a Discord server, and we have ESP32 in which we have a bot. Bot is connected to the Discord, and on the other side we are using Discord application for publishing new firmware versions. When we send new firmware version to the Discord server, server will forward firmware to the ESP32 and update will be performed. That is pretty straightforward, but check this out. What if we have another ESP32 connected to the same server? There is another command where we can instead of mentioning specific device, say that we want to update every one device. So let's go again. We have released new firmware version. Discord will broadcast new firmware to all devices. All devices will perform update. Nice. Actually, it seems nice, but it's not. We know that in time of building application for Discord bot, we need to set bot token in configuration menu. That token will be injected into firmware image so that bot can use that token for authentication. But in this case we have two bots, and which token will be injected into firmware before publishing to the Discord? If we inject the token of the first bot, then if the second bot flashed that image into himself, it will break his connection with Discord because only one can be logged into the Discord with unique token. Otherwise, if we build firmware with the token of the second bot, first one will lose connection. And that is the issue. We want to be able to update all devices at once, but don't want to break their connections. Here is a simple solution. When we flash the firmware first time, ESP32 should copy the token from the configuration to his flash memory. And on every next reboot, it should load the token from the flash instead of configuration. Because flash memory is independent of the firmware image and it will remain intact after the next flashing. So when we build next firmware, even with totally wrong token relating to both bots, when the bots flash the firmware and reboot, it will take the correct token from their flash memories instead from the firmware image. Let's now see this in practical example. For enabling feature of saving bot token into the flash memory, all what we need to do is to introduce OTA configuration with property OTA multiple set to true and pass configuration property to the OTA init function. For the sake of better presentation, I will quickly write down the part of the code that will blink the LED every one second. Ok, let's flash the app now. LED blinks and bot is connected to Discord. We can notice here the message which says that token is loaded from the configuration. Later you will notice here that the token will be loaded from the NVS memory instead. That means the token will be copied from configuration to flash and every next time it will be loaded from the flash, what is exactly what we are expecting. Great, let's flash the same app to the second ESP32, but this time we need to set the token of the second bot so the second ESP32 can copy correct token to his flash memory. Now we have two ESP32s connected to the Discord and both running the same application. Let's go now and execute OTA everyone status. Now both bots replied with the statuses of their firmwares. Hold on here for a moment. If we take a closer look to the dis statuses, we can notice that even the firmware versions are the same, date, time and hashes are not. Reason of that is because we compile images separately because of different tokens. Let's now publish new firmware. 
First, increase the version. For better demonstration, let's say that in new version we want that LED blinks faster on both devices. So, I will reduce this interval to 250 milliseconds. Build the app with idf.py build. From the build folder, grab the new firmware and drop him into Discord server. Write down correct command and press enter. Both devices got the information about new firmware and both of them starts with download. After the download, both devices sends information that new firmware has been mounted. First, what we can notice here is that the LEDs now blink faster as we expect. In status messages received from the devices, now we can see that both devices run exactly the same firmware with the same hashes as well as the same compilation date times and versions. For the end, I need to mention that even in multiple environment you still can decide to flash only one device with the same command OTA, then the mention of device and then the update. As well, you can request for status from a specific device. When we talk about security, by default only administrators of the Discord server can invoke OTA commands. That can be changed with configuration. With configuration we also can set specific channel in which OTA can be performed so other channels will be ignored. By default OTA can be performed in all channels. When we want more specific situations, when we have even more devices on the same server and some of them has a one application and some of them has totally different one, then we can create custom roles and channels on the server. For example, we can create roles OTA group 1 and OTA group 2, as well as channels OTA 1 and OTA 2. Then in server settings set that the channel OTA1 is private only for the role OTA group 1 and OTA2 is private only for the role OTA group 2. Then we can isolate one group of the devices by giving them role OTA group 1 and other ones with giving them role OTA group 2. Now when we want to update only first group of the devices we can simply go to the first channel and send firmware with command OTA everyone update and Discord will broadcast message only to the devices which have OTA group 1 role and for the second group we just need to send firmware to the second channel. Pretty cool huh? With just a few lines of code we can integrate OTA feature into our ESP32 devices. Now it just depends on your needs how you want to organize your Discord server and bots. I hope you will find this video useful or at least interesting. If you do, you can write some comments down below, leave a like or support me with a subscribe. Anyway, thank you for watching and till the next time, see ya!